collaboration with F1 in schools, Airbus would like to welcome you on board once again. In our last video, we discussed how a wing's 2D shape impacts its aerodynamic performance. In this new video, we will talk about some exciting and practical applications of aerodynamic design in F1 cars and in Airbus aircraft. You already know that aerofoils can generate more lift by increasing the camber, but too much camber can cause flow separation, which results in drastic increase in drag. In order to manage this effect, engineers invented a movable flap to optimize the camber of the wing for different flight stages. As the flap is deployed, lift increases with camber, but flow separation is avoided by allowing some air to be redirected from the lower to the upper surface. Remember that a deployed flap introduces additional drag. So, we only use flaps when necessary, such as during takeoff and landing. They are retracted during cruise to reduce drag which saves fuel. This is crucial for airlines and also benefits the environment. F1 engineers have also applied this idea in their designs. As for our A350 wing, a single aerofoil with a high camber will lead to unacceptable drag and inefficiency. But with slotted wings, the airflow is better controlled and the wing can be adapted to different speeds. The performance of the car can be further improved with a drag reduction system, better known as DRS, which allows the flap angle to be modified during a race. The flap angle is reduced during long straights to minimize drag and allow the car to achieve its maximum top speed. This is similar to the retraction of flaps on an aircraft during cruise. The DRS is then deactivated before entering a corner to offer maximum downforce, allowing the car to turn faster. So far, we have considered the aerodynamics of an aerofoil in 2D. We also need to consider the aerodynamic effects in 3D introduced by wingspan. As you know, the pressure above the wing is much lower than the pressure below the wing. This is what produces lift and keeps our A350 in the air. Air flows from below the wing and out around the tip to the upper surface in a circular motion. This air movement is known as wingtip vortices. These vortices impact the efficiency of the wing by reducing lift and increasing drag. However, there is a smart way to minimise these effects. By optimising the design of the wing and its wing tips, we can reduce the strength of the resulting vortices. Drag is then decreased, resulting in fuel savings. In the following videos, you can see that over the years, Airbus engineers successfully implemented improvements on the A320 family. From no winglets in the initial design, to wingtip fences, and most recently, sharklets. A similar improvement has been made on F1 cars since wingtip vortices work similarly for them too. Without the wingtip device, large vortices can develop, which reduces the generated downforce. We usually see end plates fitted to modern cars to recover some of the downforce lost due to the 3D nature of the wing. However, vortices can be useful. If they are used carefully, we can redirect them and avoid flow separation in critical areas. For this purpose, we use small triangular wings called strakes. Again, the same design principles are applied in F1 cars where strakes are placed on the front wing to control the airflow over the rest of the car. As we have seen in the previous videos, the shape of an aerodynamic body can significantly affect the drag it creates. In aircraft design, the fuselage nose is a complex area. It needs to meet several requirements, such as maintaining pilot visibility, whilst also minimizing the effects of drag. Designs have morphed from the boxy appearance of the 50s to designs like the one on our A350. Its sharp nose is designed to minimize the airflow separation over the rest of the fuselage, reducing drag, meanwhile giving greater visibility for the pilots. F1 cars have historically looked boxy and therefore aerodynamically inefficient with lots of sharp corners. Similar to aviation, design improvements have been implemented on F1 cars to achieve the best aerodynamic standards. As our designs are being optimized, we need the right methods and tools that can model complex effects. Designing aerodynamics to produce vortices just right can be very hard and the calculations can get quite tricky. 
In Airbus, one of the tools we use to design and analyze the performance of our products is Computational Fluid Dynamics, or CFD software. CFD can be helpful for your car designs too. In this simulation, we can visualize the flow separation over the wing's upper surface. CFD is a very powerful flow visualization tool, which provides you with detailed pictures you can use to spot areas of improvement. But it's not just about pretty pictures. The real power of CFD is in its ability to cheaply compare the aerodynamic performance of different concepts. It is important to realize that even with the best tool, simulation can be different to reality. To validate our simulation, we, in Airbus, put models in a wind tunnel and measure their performance. You probably don't have a sophisticated wind tunnel, but it doesn't mean you can't test your predictions. To summarize, we have discussed in detail some of the aerodynamic devices, modeling and testing methods used here in Airbus and in F1. The sky has no limit. The possibilities are endless. Use this toolbox and be innovative to cross the finish line quickest. Want to find out more about career opportunities within Airbus? Please visit our website.